Hello everyone, um, my name is Alison Doudney and this is my presentation uh, six YAML customization tools that you can't live without or can leave behind. And yes, this is still the right presentation. I just uh, scaled down the number a bit. Um, so, oh, hello. Yeah, I'm a bit short, so. <laughs> so what will we cover in this presentation? We will cover why would you need a YAML customization tool, some problems that you face when you're trying to do more with YAML, what do I mean by YAML customization tool, some of these tools with demo usage, and some takeaway thoughts for overall for when you want to, you know, when you're dealing with these tools. So a little bit about who um, I, um, I'm Alison, I'm based out of New Zealand, I'm a customer reliability engineer for Weaveworks and I'm a student at the University of Waikato studying computer science. And so what are the problems that people face when trying to do more with YAML? So YAML is, is static, so you know, if you're, you can't really do much with it on the go, you can't really change values on the fly, so you need extra tools for that. Um, when you have different configurations for deployments, you can end up in situations where you're repeating a lot of the, you're repeating a lot of code that you've declared for your, your deployment. So you might have two YAML files, one's a production and one's a staging, and it can be hard to distinguish what the difference between these two YAMLs are, right? So what we can do is we can use tooling to be able to make it easier for us to distinguish and generate YAML on the go. So, yeah. So what do I mean by a YAML customization tool? So these are tools that allow us to dynamically alter the values of pre-existing YAML or create YAML based on YAML-like code structures. That's a lot of YAML. Um, I feel like I need, I need a button that I press every time I say YAML. <laughs> so it, you, can, you can customize and extend YAML in many ways. You know, some people, some people use YAML to extend YAML, and some people inject values into YAML, right? So, first up, I'm gonna just go through all the tools that I looked at now, and it's gonna be uh, just a brief skim off the top, because if, if we deep dive into all of these all at once, it can be quite overwhelming. So if you see a tool in here that piques your interest, go, go, go and have a look into it deeper as well. So first up, we have Helm. So Helm is probably something that a lot of you, a tool that a lot of you are familiar with. So it allows you to make packages for your configuration. It's templating, allows you to do a lot of conditionals, if else, loops, and it's a lot really. So I've got a, I've got a couple demos here on my machine so we can actually have a look into what a helm chart is so uh, a deployment in helm is is helm chart so let's go in there so we have a demo app here and so a helm chart's broken up into a chart.yaml which hang on which has a, a, a short kind of description some metadata uh, another folder called charts where you can have subcharts in and a templates folder where you have the templates which you, you can inject values which are declared in values.yaml. So to deploy a Helm chart, um, you just use Helm install and the Helm chart. Oh, sorry, I'm a bit rusty here. 
And so it was really quick actually. So you just name, provide a name for your deployment and the name of the folder if you have it locally or you can use repos. So that's just a little example of deploying a Helm chart. Next up we have JK. So with JK you can generate YAML uh, from JavaScript. So it's the whole idea about this is using a general purpose language. Um, you can use it in conjunction with other tools that, that handle JS. And I'm also going to show a little demo. So CD into JK. So, so this command here, what I, so I'm running JK, and I'm generating using a billing JS. So oh, hang on, I've run into an issue. This demo is broken. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong folder. <laughs> uh. So what have we done here? We've used this billing.js file, which imports microservice from microservice, which is another JS file, which has some declarations for other YAML files. And we've used that file to generate some YAML files. So if you see over in the billing folder, we have some YAML files there. Next, there was another tool that I had a look at, but I didn't have time to create a demo for. Um, it's called Captain, and it's, what I noticed about it, it was very fine-grained, like it was very specific, it had like a, a directory for everything. So it, it handled documentation, scripting, secrets. Um, and so the way that works is it would compile an inventory into template files and it would generate secrets as well. So that would be a really good one to walk away and have a look at. Uh, another tool is Customize. Um, it's also part of kubectl. It's a kubectl plugin. It's a SIG CLI subproject. And it has a focus of extending YAML rather than trying to inject values straight into it. So with tools like Helm, you, you might be familiar with the curly braces saying, oh, yep, we're going to put those values in there. With Customize, all your extensions are declared in separate YAML files, and you can have different overlays for production and staging environments. To show a bit more about what I mean there is I'm going to do another little demo Okay. So, da, da, da. so we have customize. So customize. So I've I've prepared this this demo based on one of the examples I found inside the customize repo. So over here we're going to use, we're going to make an overlay based with the YAML in the base folder. So if I look in the base folder, there's a config map, a deployment, a customization, and a service. So if I cat the overlays production, so, so there's a deployment there, and there's a customized YAML. And so a customize, the customized YAML re references that base folder as well. So, yeah. And so what has happened here? Um, so it's, so the values that were inside that overlay folder have been combined with the values that were inside the base folder, creating a new YAML file. So next slide. So another tool that I didn't have time to make, to make a demo for was Plumi, which is, looks, was, sorry. It allows you to use code-like structures to define all this deployment config 
as well as handle infrastructure. So AWS, Azure, all, all, the, all the infrastructure side. So you could have a, a program that handles, you know, not only just deploying an application in Kubernetes that can handle deploying your infrastructure. So. And so the way that works is that a program will allocate resources, the language host executes the program to get the desired state, and a deployment engine monitors and manages that state. So yeah, that's another one. So another one that I looked at was YTT, which uh, had this inline cust, well, all of them have an inline approach, but the way it, the, the way the templating was laid out, rather than having like a Go or the curly braces style. It was just, it was very YAML like. So I'm going to just show you what I mean when I say that. Hang on. My terminal stops. Oh, there we go. CD. Mm. So you can see here in line, it has it has things like a uh, dot port, echo dot port, and all that. So how what does this look like when we run it? So I'm just gonna go start. Whoops. So what's happened there is it's used, um, so you can notice that some of those definitions with the hash in there, they've got like values in there now, and yeah. Um, general takeaways, so with all these tools, it's so easy to get lost in the details with them, but one of the, some of the key things that you need to think about when wanting to use a tool to to solve your YAML problems is what's the actual problem that you're trying to solve? Are you trying to solve a problem when you're running in CICD and having to change one thing on the fly? Are you trying to solve developers' workflows? You have to also think about who's going to be interacting with this YAML, with this deployment, and how they'll interact with it. And you also need to think, do you need a tool for this yet? If you're in the really early stages of prototyping and putting things together, like you, you might get sunk into the details too much of using a tool to deal with your YAML. So, yep, thank you very much for listening to my talk. And yeah. So any, any questions? Do you know if uh, any of these tools can be used from Go? I mean, um, when I meant use, I meant to use the, the code, not the binary. So the, so the question was, can any of this, of this code, any of this stuff be used as code? So, uh, so would you say then like an SDK? So can I, they have a, like a Go package that I can import into my Go code and use them? Absol absolutely, I believe some of these tools do have that. Actually, like I know that Pulumi has a has a Go SDK. I'm pretty sure. I've also got some links in the end as well. If you want to have like a look around, um, there's a link full of slides. If anyone wants to take a photo. Uh, so the question was um, the uh, the person who asked question asked. So they've used a lot of JQ JQ for JSON. Is there equivalent for a YAML? Um, I believe there is a a YQ actually. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, any other questions? Yes. Do you have a favorite? Do I have a favorite? Um, at the moment, not really. Yeah. But thank you for the question. Um, Do you have cat and cure the sticker here? I do have the cat stickers here. <laughs> yeah. So if you would like one, come see me afterwards. Oh. You're gonna come? Just, just one sticker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, that's it, I guess. Thank you very much and